for our call to worship. I don't know if that bell rang or not, Jeff. There it is. By golly. It's Christmas Eve. Yeah, I remember Don Turple in Hesperia who owned Turple's Hardware calling the gentleman who owned V&S, you know, um, the store. And he said, uh, hey, it's Christmas Eve. And he said, yes, it is. He said, I haven't bought Helen anything. I'll meet you down at the store, Don. <laughs> Calling for our call to worship with words from Psalm 96. Oh, sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice. Let the sea roar and all that fills it. Let us worship God. Please remain standing and join with me in our hymn of preparation. What child is this? Hymn number 180. I thought so too. Please remain standing and join with me in our prayer of approach that you will find printed in your bulletin. Lord God, in this season of giving, let us be reminded of the greatest gift given to all humanity, Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, born in a humble manger. The true character of the gift is revealed, and let us never judge by human standards 
the expression of love displayed that day in Bethlehem. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. be seated. Terry, I baton to you. Sweet little Jesus boy. They made you be born in a manger. Sweet little holy child, they didn't know who you were. Didn't know you'd come to save us, Lord, to take our sins away. Our eyes was blind. We couldn't see. We didn't know who you were. Long time ago, you were born, born in a manger, Lord. Sweet little Jesus boy, the word dread you may, Lord, dread me may too, but that's how things are down here. We don't know. John told us how we are trying. Master, you have shown us how even when you were dying. Just seems like we can do right. Look how we treated you. But please, sir, forgive us, Lord. We didn't know who you were. Sweet little Jesus boy, born long time ago. And we didn't know who you were. At this time, I'll invite all of the children in the sanctuary to come help me light our fourth Advent candle. I cannot be trusted all by myself. No, I cannot. You need to watch me. Does that baby come home yet? Not yet, huh? Pretty soon. Hope oh, very exciting. Okay. Hi there. How are you? There are boys over there. I don't know if you've noticed. It's a good thing that you got. Oh, there you go. They're actually more boys than there are ladies. I'm a little, yeah. Well, stop it. 
This trend changes as they get older. If you look around you, there are more ladies here than there are men. So, but it's too foggy to play golf. Yeah. Yes. One, two, three. Good morning. I wasn't there. I didn't say good morning. I was going to say four, five, six. I've made, I, I have, I have a new calling. I'm a math teacher. Yes. Nine minus six equals three. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> we'll take it. I did kind of throw him for a little bit of a curve there. All right. Come on down here. We're going to light our candles. It's always very exciting. Okay, yes, you're the, you're the sister that, that helps the brother do the smart thing. Back up just a little bit. Okay, here we're going to go. Ready? Now, this is a journey. This has been a journey around the Advent wreath, but it's also representing another journey. The journey from the first time Mary, the mother of Jesus, learned that she was going to have a baby and where the child would be born and the star that guided them and all of the rest of the story. It is such a wonderful, wonderful message. So we'll start by lighting the first and then the second. And then the third. Good morning. The Holy Spirit. We have a theme here. That's the Holy Spirit, I think. And then the fourth candle. But no fifth. Candle. And I did it with one match. Yay. I'm very proud of myself. So here's the story. Are you ready? And when they saw that the star had stopped, do you know who they were? The Magi. Oh. They were overwhelmed with joy. And on entering the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they knelt down and paid him homage. That means they worshiped him. Then, opening their treasure chest, they offered him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to return to Herod, they left for their own country. No blowing and no playing with the candles. By another road. The fourth candle has been called the star candle. Star. Let's bow our heads, fold our hands, and we'll pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. You guys can go back to your seats or out to children's activities. Thank you, a children's activity lady. God bless you, Judy. <laughs> Good luck. They're mostly yours anyway. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I love the fact that Presbyterians know how to pace themselves. We're not Christian Reformed. We are not Pentecostal or Baptist, and there's nothing wrong with that. We are just who we are, right? But we're not accustomed to three services on one Sunday. I mean, that's stretching us. I mean, as Presbyterians, you know, there are Baptists out there going, nothing to it. <laughs> there's nothing to it. Unlike, you know, if I was a Baptist pastor, I wouldn't, you know, because I'd be in shape, I wouldn't need to take a nap this afternoon. And I, I, I know members of our choir are going to be just as busy. And yet, Terry, you're here. God bless you, uh, giving us your gifts of music this morning. But, you know, Marsha and Carla are always here doing the same exact thing. God bless them, huh? <laughs> I see, Carla, there's a flower in front of you this morning. Is it your family? No. Is it my family? No. It's the church family. Let's read about it. We have a bird. Whenever we have a rose in the sanctuary, 
uh, we have a dedication announcing a birth. So our rose dedication is to announce the birth of Amelia Rose Zimmer. Born December 19th, 2023. That's a good tax break right there. And weighing in at four pounds, one ounce, 17 inches long. Congratulations to proud parents, Annie Burnside and Justin Zimmer and their siblings, Daniel, Trevor, Taylor, and proud Oma, Judy Burnside. So congratulations. Congratulations, you guys. That is exciting. And we have beautiful flowers by the cross this morning. The flowers beautifying the sanctuary at the cross are given by Holly and John Cole. And I love this quote, glory to God in the highest and on earth, goodwill, peace, goodwill toward men. We need it in the world today. From Luke chapter 2, verse 14. May the spirit of the Christmas season guide us throughout the year ahead, inspiring us. Boy, wouldn't this be a great mantra to spread kindness, compassion and understanding you know it's that it's that example that we get from washington so i, I think we all thought no wait 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 that's not the example but anyway uh thank you for that beautiful dedication we need to hear that and feel that in our hearts please recognize this is a great time to take the friendship pads located in the pew rack in front of you open them up sign your name pass them down the pew let them come back open that you might take note of the name of the person seated next to you or even down the pew from you and that you might greet that person by name here on this christmas eve sunday morning so while you're doing that i would just remind you we've got a few announcements you know it's it's kind of thinned out today. Not bad, Ruth. Uh, but the, the one that is important for me to highlight is the giving envelopes. Um, please take note of that. Um, if you want giving envelopes, if you haven't been giving them, getting them, let Ruth know. We can make that happen. If you're getting giving envelopes, but you don't want them or you don't use them, let Ruth know, and that saves us money. So thank you for that. We want to be good stewards. Tonight, I don't know if you realize this, but tonight um, we have two services. One at 7 and one at 10.30. I'm expecting a little more family. They're the same services. What, I, what time did I say? Well, I start preaching at 10.30. So, so <laughs> if you get here, I know the choir will take a break in between the services. Sometimes I wonder about what's in the eggnog. But we always have a good time. And we will get it started sometime between 10 and 10.30. Fair enough. But the service is at 10 p.m. Thank you. I will correct myself on that. And at that time, we traditionally announce the recipients for our Christmas tree sale. Uh, however, it's very seldom that we get Christmas Eve on Sunday morning. And so I'm going to break, uh, stretch tradition just a little bit. And I want to announce to you the recipients of our Christmas tree sales. And so we have two tiers. We always do that. We have tier one and tier two. The amounts in those differ year to year depending on the number of trees sold. And so I'm very excited today that our tier one recipients each have received $1,250. Didn't come solicited. They had no idea it was coming. And so what a wonderful celebration uh, at Christmas time for all of them. The first is a Kinderkirk Parent Scholarship. This means that for parents who may be struggling this time of year economically, uh, the last thing they have to worry about is pulling their child from Kinderkirk Preschool Daycare because we don't want that to happen. And so we have established a scholarship fund for many, many years to help parents to be able to accomplish this important goal. So they are the first recipient. Mosaic Counseling, another wonderful organization that provides clinical trained counselors. And especially in the holiday season, it can be very challenging for many families. So Mosaic has received a check from us as well. The NOAA Project, we don't forget our fur friends, our furry friends, our friends with paws and claws and all of the rest. Um, so a, a wonderful nonprofit, No Kill Animal Shelter, uh, has received $1,250. Uh, the SLPC Benevolence Housing Assistance Fund, the 
this doesn't go to us. This goes through us. Uh, we work in, in uh, cooperation with many other churches in the region to take it a step above what normally Love Incorporated would be able to do. Um, we, we provide a team approach to helping offset maybe back rents, maybe uh, mortgage payments, uh, utilities to keep them from being shut off. And it was, it's more than one church by ourselves could do. And so we team with several other congregations and we provide these funds in a pool to be able to offset those needs. And then Step Up Muskegon, Step Up's purpose is to equip and empower young adults who have aged out of the foster care program. So you're 17 years old, you're 17, 11 months, and you realize that in less than a month, the funds that support you in foster care stop. And there are many families, foster families, who continue their care regardless but there are some who cannot. And so those young people are kind of left abandoned with great anxiety. And Step Up is a wonderful project to help ease that transition and help them financially and in other ways to be able to learn to support themselves in the months and years ahead. So a wonderful, wonderful recipients. Our tier two recipients receive $750. The Little Red House, if you're not familiar with this, uh, for families who have a loved one struggling with or dealing with dementia, um, it can be extremely challenging and to care providers. And what a wonderful opportunity for them to have a little a rest to be able to drop off a loved one and know that they're safe and overlooked and cared for while they may do some shopping or just have a spa day or just have time to themselves for those few hours. So Little Red House is a, a, one of our recipients have received $750. Our missionaries in the Presbyterian denomination, Kathy Chang, and Juan Lopez are working in Manila primarily with the sex trafficking that often takes place in the Philippines. And so this is their special call, and we want them to know that we have not forgotten their effort. So Juan Lopez and Kathy Chang have received $750 from you. Uh, our Association for the Blind and Vis Visually Impaired. This is, I think, the first year that we have uh, worked with and teamed with this organization. And we always love to be able to support those who have received help in the past, but also to recognize that there are many needs out there. And so we are supporting uh, the Association for Blind and Visually Impaired. They assist clients by providing low vision services such as employment training, rehabilitation services, and assistive technology training. They try to ensure that every client continues to thrive in a sighted world. So a total given away to charity in 2023, $8,500. We sold 230 trees. Thank you very much for all of your graciousness. Now, this is important, too. Uh, overall, since 1993, 30 years, the total given to charity from tree sales, listen to this, $279,720. So we make a difference in the world. And I want to uh, uh, point out specifically Ruth Sorensen, Bill Lyons, Judy Burnside, and our volunteers who have the setup crew and unloaders, the shed sales, the weekends and weeknights, and everyone who purchased a tree and all who posted and shared the post on social media to make this a success. Once again, wonderful job. Please stand up and say good morning to the person standing next to you, wondering how many services they're going to attend today. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. See you tonight. <laughs> nice job, you guys. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. God bless you. All right, Carla.
Please be seated. And now for the parents, I want to share that we have posted last week's uh, service, including the children's pageant. But subsequent to that, for our Kinderkirk parents, uh, we have posted on your website, um, and you have uh, or will be receiving a link for that. I'm sharing this now over live stream. Uh, with the Kinderkirk Children's Program. And what a wonderful time it was to see all of those children here. Uh, so thank you, Jeff, for taking the extra time to record that and to make sure that that's going to be up there as well for our Kinderkirk parents. This is a busy season, always very special. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, we pray first of all for peace in a world torn with strife. We pray, Lord, for the seeds of peace to be planted in our hearts, for that is the fertile ground. That's the ground that matters. And Lord, we pray for those who suffer as victims of violence, who live and wake every morning, worried about their loved ones, their families, worried about food and their safety. We pray, Lord, that you would grant those in leadership positions wisdom, of course, but grace as well, and to guide them with a loving heart. And we pray, Lord, that when we fail as human beings, as Christians, as part of your creation, as politicians, Lord, that your grace would overcome our failures and that your love would be the guiding star to lead the Magi. Gracious God, we pray for our church in a time of social change that we would acknowledge our failings, our imperfections, our bias. But Lord, we would also acknowledge and proclaim the grace of the gift of your Son, Jesus Christ, whose very life and ministry was an example of how we are called to live sacrificially for others. And Lord, now I pray for parents, new and many old, grandparents and great-grandparents, that would, you would give the energy this night to be able to do the tasks and yet to be able to celebrate with family and loved ones. We pray, Lord, for those who cannot be together at home this weekend. Lord, that you would grant peace and the knowledge, knowledge and assurance of their love. And we pray and ask for traveling blessings for those who are traveling in many different forms these days. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Our scripture reading should be familiar to you. It is from the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 2, verses 1 through 20. If you'd like to follow along in your pew Bible, and I encourage you to do so, you should find the reading on page 832. Luke chapter 2, reading verses 1 through 20. Listen for the word of God. In those days a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the land, to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary, to whom he was engaged, and who was expecting a child. 
While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you, and you will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with an angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. And when they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them. Here ends the reading of God's holy word. Let us pray. Gracious God, let your Holy Spirit rest upon us now. Let our hearts turn from the busyness of this day to the grace of the true gift given to all humanity. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. I am hearing in my, in my head right now, I don't know what you call that, your mind, your imagination, uh, the piano, you know, you know strength. Da 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 Can you imagine? Dun, dun, dun. Who would have who would have tied that to a Christmas program? Dun, 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 this is jazz. Who would tie jazz to a Christmas? But can you imagine Charlie Brown's Christmas having any other soundtrack? It has made it such a part of our, our, our holiday tradition for so many decades. We grew up with it. And it seems to, to bridge from generation to generation. It doesn't matter that uh, we don't have Beyonce singing the songs. It doesn't matter that... Uh, uh, <laughs> that's about the extent of my hip. <laughs> Taylor somebody. <laughs> I know, I know. People are going, oh, good Lord. <laughs> he doesn't know anything. Somebody help him. But uh, I, I love the scene, and I know most of you are familiar with the, the scene I'm talking about, where Charlie Brown is, is expressing his frustration. He's trying, as always, so hard to, to make things right and to do something special. And it, all of the people who look to the one who is doing the work and making the effort, and of course they stand back and they criticize. And suddenly... They are reminded. It's a wonderful opportunity to be reminded ourselves of the Christmas message. As Charlie Brown is frustrated and wondering and pondering about the reason of Christmas, Linus, his wise friend, you know, holding the blanket that gives him security with his thumb in his mouth, takes out his thumb and says, I will tell you what Christmas is all about, Charlie Brown. And he recites the passage that I just lifted up. Can you take yourself there? First to Charlie Brown's Christmas. And it impacted the crowd of children. And they recognized that the silly old tree that uh, is always the last one that we sell here, we call the Charlie Brown tree. 
the silly old tree that, that uh, uh, quite often would be used for uh, fish habitat as it's stuck under the ice, which we have none of right now. Um, but no, someone take it, takes it home. They adopt it into their home. They, they, they give it love and they surround it with decorations. And we see that tree, that Charlie Brown tree, become the centerpiece. You know, I don't know if you get the, script, the scriptural reference in that. Because Jesus later in his life is teaching. And he's teaching the teachers. He's teaching the religious leaders in the temple. And he tells them this powerful truth that, that uh, is represented in Charlie Brown's Christmas tree. It's the stone that the builders rejected. The stone that had been cast aside because it wasn't perfect. It wasn't cut in the way that we thought it should be. The corners wouldn't, weren't square. The sides were not plumb. It can't be used to build a wall. But it can be the keystone that holds the arches together. That keystone that once set in makes sense of everything else and gives security to the building. The keystone was one that was rejected. The tree, the Charlie Brown tree, was the last to sell. And it takes a special person to have the, the vision to see what can be. How many of us are like Charlie Brown's trees? How many of us find ourselves feeling that we're just not hip enough? Taylor Swift, isn't it? I got it. Yeah, I just wanted you to know. I got it. And Kelsey's somebody who plays for some team. I don't know. <laughs> it's like soccer with helmets. I, I know. Uh, <laughs> To be able to have that vision within us, what a gift that is. To be able to receive that gift, maybe that doesn't generate within our own hearts, but God gives you the vision to see what can be made of, of your neighbor, your friend, your child, your grandchild, that you're, you're, you're pulling your hair out, you're, you're frustrated, you can't, you, you can't understand their rejection of traditional faith models. And you're thinking, well, Lord, what are we going to do? How are they going to, to be people that, that, that are productive and constructive and part of good citizens in our society? And what we find out is, in addition to those normal models, thank God there are the exceptions. The Charlie Brown Christmas trees. The stones rejected by the builders to become the keystone of the project that God has planned to fruition. These are shepherds, by the way, in our passage. They are not the highest level of society. They are not the, the elite, successful people. They are the people who are forced by their circumstance to live the Bible in King James says they abided in the fields. The translation for us is that they lived in the fields. They lived out in nature. Can you imagine? You know, they don't get up in the morning and go to the spa and then shower afterwards. They carry with them weapons to defend themselves and the sheep that they protect not only from creatures in nature, but from other human beings who might steal, who might plunder. The Bible tells us that shepherds, uh, it was common practice for them when they were able to be somewhere where they could, could put the sheep in a, in a corral that was built with uh, stones from the field. No gate existed. The shepherd themselves were the gate. They laid their bodies across the opening to protect the sheep from those predators that might come from outside and to keep the sheep safe from wandering themselves. 
All of these illusions that when we start looking at Scripture, we start realizing that these are tied to life. When Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. He's talking about laying himself before the gate to protect us. When he gives a lesson of a a sheep that is lost from the flock, it is the good shepherd that leaves the 99 who goes out and searches diligently until they find that lost sheep. And then the Bible tells us that they pick it up, put it over their shoulders, and they walk back rejoicing because of the victory that day. The victory is not monetary. The victory is that they have saved a lost sheep. And what does that mean for us and the Charlie Brown Christmas trees among us? That God loves us so much and that God made you just the way you are, regardless of what what patterns that you might extend and boundaries that you might push or even live outside of. And trying to live out God's love means that we as followers of Christ are called to love those different than ourselves, who live their life differently, who may reject the things that we find normative, that might reject the patterns. We don't need to understand them. We don't need to get the fact that, that um, you know, I, the first time I saw a person, uh, an adult, wearing cat ears, walking down the sidewalk, I was like, what? <laughs> and then I learned about furries. But that's just another way of saying, hey, I don't, I don't fit in. And how many of you, if you really think back, see, these are memories that we block out. You really think back to how you felt as you were figuring out who it is that you are. Some of us forget. I wonder how many of the shepherds went back from that momentous night where angels appeared before them with this announcement that, don't be afraid, for I bring you tidings of great joy, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is Christ the Lord. That's the King James Version. Who is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. You shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger. Now we hear that phrase so often, we think it makes sense. But when the first recipients of that message heard it, they thought, a child lying with the animals... Just like us. Just like us. Lying with the animals. Protecting the flock. Let us go and see this thing that the angel has made known unto us. So the Bible tells us they went and they searched. And in this process of searching, can you imagine uh, a handful of, of rough men who have left their flock in the hillside alone, going and knocking on doors, calling out, where is the child that was born? For an angel told us that he is the fulfillment of prophecy. And it begs the question whether other people followed them as well, their own curiosity being sparked to the place where the babe lay. In a manger. And the Bible tells us that they made known all around to everyone who would listen the word that God had sent to them from the angels. A powerful night and a powerful message. God's Christ, the fulfillment of prophecy, born not in a palace, but in a stable. And the people that were the first to receive the the news of this miracle were not leaders in the church, but were shepherds living in the fields. I think sometimes we've got our priorities all messed up and we're looking at people as Charlie Brown Christmas trees 
and finding ourselves looking down our nose and, and feeling sorry for them when we're being gracious and more often than that, judging them when we should recognize that they, more often than not, are the recipients of God's grace and of God's message of hope and salvation and promise. So if you're at the dining room table and you're worried about that, that nephew or that niece who seem to be struggling to, to fit in and dressing different than you uh, would normally find appropriate, just recognize that they are probably the ones who are at the center of the gospel message. And the rebellious spirit that they feel, feel and the life that they're living to show that they reject the model of success that frankly sometimes is so much easier is an example of a calling that God has placed within their hearts. So listen to what they have to say. And let God soften your heart to receive the message of grace. Let us pray. Gracious and almighty God, Lord, I thank you for your gift to those of us who are left less than perfect. I thank you, Lord, for the grace that you show to all of us. And I thank you, Lord, for the amazement of the shepherds. Remind us this day of their joy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our hymn of praise, Angels from the Realms of Glory, hymn number 190. Let's stand together and sing. Amen, indeed. Please be seated. Let us pray. Gracious God, receive these gifts from our hearts in this day of giving. Let us be reminded of your grace and glory. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Let us now return unto God a portion of what is already his.
our tithes, and our offerings. Chill of the nightfall, lamps in the windows, letting their light fall clear on the snow. Bitter December bids us remember Christ in the stable. Long, long ago, splendor of starlight high in the hillside, faint is the far light burning below, kneeling before him. Shepherds adore him, Christ in the stable, long, long ago. Glory of daybreak, sorrows and shadows, sudden. shall be well now, for in the stable Jesus is born. Please remain standing and turn in your hymnal to number 197 as we sing our hymn of faith, It Came Upon the Midnight Clear.
It's 11 o'clock in the morning. You have just a few hours to prepare to come back. 7 and 10 p.m. are the hours. Candlelight Christmas Eve. What a wonderful way, what a wonderful tradition to continue or to begin. I look forward to seeing you tonight. And now go out into the world in peace. Have courage. Hold on to what is good. Return no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted, support the weak, and help the suffering. Honor everyone. Love and serve the Lord, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And if I don't see you, Merry Christmas. Thank you.